Hello guys and welcome to the Beyond Sanas channel, my name is Shanks and today we are going to play Mordor against Heart Army on the brand new map here in DL for the patch 2.22 for Battle for Middle of 1 and also in this game I will be able, hopefully able to explain you all the changes we have implemented into the Mordor faction. As I saw, a couple of you guys were complaining about Mordor being too weak and my goal in this video is to prove you wrong. So let's recruit Callum and... Look at this beautiful map. Please let me know, guys, in the comment section down below what you think about this map. We have also a settlement behind the base. And you can download and play this map also from our Discord. In the maps channel. There is an outpost. Gollum will be capturing this settlement. And the orcs are going to capture this settlement right here. And let's wall check now to see the enemy faction. It's a good faction. As you can see, my curse is jumping. This way we can tell that the enemy has walls. So we have Goblin Lair at the roof on each side. And that's going to be our target. We need to creep this ASAP. Gollum, my friend, I need your help. And also we need to recruit a bunch of new Orcs. Orcs are changed completely, by the way, guys. We have now Bloodthirsty being reworked. Earlier, it was giving you the chance to eat friendly Orcs to get experience. And in most cases, it was kind of useless. Now, once you hit level 2 with the Orcs, you will passively gain 25% increased damage. Mordor is a faction that doesn't need too many changes in the mid to late game because you are extremely strong. But your early game might be kind of weak. And I'm assuming with these changes, we will be able to make the early game from the Mordor faction a little bit better. Follow me, goblins. And once the orcs are able to attack, we will use Eye of Sauron, which also got a bit nerfed from 100% combat experience down to 50% combat experience. I mean, this is not only affecting the Mordor faction. We have overall nerfed the combat experience in Battle for Middle of One just because you was getting so much money. Uh, so much experience, you know? The creep secured, that's beautiful. You will also be able to deal with that. And now watch that. The level 2 orc, as you can see, level 3 orc, by the way, has the bloodthirsty. That means the orcs are going to be able to kill now enemy structures and also enemy units a bit easier and faster. That was the main problem of the Mordor faction in the early game. You needed ages to destroy a settlement from a good faction like Gondor, for example, you know? Alright, we need to build more slaughterhouses. And also, Witch King got a huge buff. He will now be able to deal 10% more damage to heroes. Like, Witch King was pretty much like a little bit stronger version of the Nazgul, which, you know, who was just giving you additional damage and armor leadership that's unchanged, of course. But other than that, there was almost no difference between a Nazgul and a Witch King. On the other side, you need to invest 3,000 more resources to be able to recruit them, you know? For that reason, we thought it's a good idea to increase this damage output against heroes especially. Oh, we have uh, the second orc pits now. Orcs are for free. We can spam them all day, all night. And also, the amount of experience orc pits are requiring to get to level 2 and level 3 is buffed. That means you can get now your orc pit to level 2 and level 3 a bit faster. Oh, Faramir is trying to show his quality. Warning arrow me. Oh my goodness. This Faramir, my friends. The farm is going to be taken down. That's good. And in this game, I will try to recruit every single unit from the Mordor faction. From the Haradrims to the Trolls, from the Trolls to the Mumakios. But first of all, let's build more resource buildings inside the castle. Because when it comes to produce units, we can also capture one of these outposts. Here, but also here. We have a bunch of settlements on this map. And also a bunch of creeps. Level 3 orcs, and you will see what I mean now, once they are able to attack the farm. They will be able to take it down way, way faster. Can we creep this, actually? Let's focus down the lair exclusively. And when it comes to destroy a structure with the Mordor faction, or with every faction, actually, in Battle for Middle of One, you want to make sure to surround the structure. This way you can maximize your damage output. In the meantime, we are getting more and more orcs. We have a lot of money. We have also now one power point collected. Let's pick up the Tainted Land. Now, with four orcs, we can also try to creep the Vorklinger. And you can see, they are dealing now. I mean, of course, Farami is shooting them down. Look at this picture. Like, that shows... Or, he looks like a guy who is just trying to make his daddy proud. Many, many archers. We will be losing this fight, of course, but it's fine. So, round. Let's move the Eye of Sauron. The outpost has, like, a double protection now on this map. Fidi and Zeal. And with a Goblin Lair and a Vorklinger. But we are getting more and more orcs recruited at the very same time. And again, Mordor is a faction that is able to get power points as you are losing orcs at the same time. 
Just like Isengard. That's why the evil factions need 20 power points to unlock their biggest summon, which is the Balrog summon, while good factions need only 10 power points, just because evil factions are able to generate power points much, much faster. The farm is gonna be taken down, but that's fine. Looks like we won't be able to creep this yet. We need another wave of orcs. We also lost the golem, but that's fine. I wanna rush a Nazgul or a Witch King actually in this game first. Witch King now has also plenty of new voice lines. He will sound different. He won't be repeatedly say all the time, no man can kill me. Like, Witch King is like the ASMR guy. You know what I'm saying from the Battle for Middle of One? He will say, feast on his flesh. Die now. My, my voice impression for the Witch King could be a little bit better. Sorry for that one. So when it comes to Creeper Warglia, the most efficient way of doing that is using one of the orcs as a bait. And as the orcs are gonna follow the odd battalion of the orcs, we can use the other odd battalions of orcs to commit against that structure. And by the way, there is another settlement. I didn't even think about that. So, and also a bunch of units. So let's capture this one. And creep this. We won't be able to kill the orcs afterwards, but that's fine. We will get a lot of money from it. That's what we are aiming for and also power points. So now we need to kind of try to fight the enemy archers, which is not going to be the easiest thing in the world, but it's fine. Again, we can afford to lose orcs. It's not a big deal. We will get power points more and more and more and more. Maybe, yeah, we weren't even able to creep that. That's the power of the bloodthirst ability, my friends. One of them is level 2, as you can see and tell. And also level 2 is a massive power spike for the evil factions, just like for the good factions, but for the evil factions it's even better, because unlike the good factions, the evil factions have no well for the sustain. That means with level 2, you will be able to heal up over time. And let's build furnaces, they are a bit tankier. We also buffed the slaughterhouses by the way, they used to have only 1500 HP with level 1, now they have 2000 HP, which makes the mortal faction a little bit tankier. Industry is unlocked, that's great. He has so many archers on the field, holy guacamole. Look at that. Let's use industry right off the bat and try to save for the 8,000, which is required to recruit the leader of the nine, the owner of the Engmar faction, the Witch King himself. We are almost there, but we need to also. Wait, hold on a second, we, did, we will definitely need a bunch of towers, boys. We need towers, towers, towers. So what we did as a change is that you cannot send your Lammermill workers to the slaughterhouses anymore. And some of you guys are taking this as a nerf, which is a buff, by the way. Because now, earlier, you could not repair your slaughterhouse with your workers. As you are trying to repair the slaughterhouse, they would get inside the slaughterhouse and die. Now, you can't do that anymore. But on the bright side, hold on a second, we are cash floating. You can still send every unit from you, beside the monsters, of course, inside your citadel, you know? This counter actually has lots of counter units to our Witch King. That's not looking good. But also the fear effects are much, much stronger than they were before. So in order to get the fear resistant, being level 2 is not enough anymore. You need to be at least level 3. Or you need to have a hero around you who offers you fear resistant. I mean, this guy has actually a lot. Really, really a lot of archers man that's going to be a bit dangerous but it's fine we will now build up the troll cage he has level five archers too that's that's scary look how many archers does he have on the field just feed the orcs it's not a big deal and you see orc pits are hitting level two way way faster like earlier they would need ages to get to level two you know we need to use screech now of course the level five unit or the level three units are not being affected but every level one level two unit is going to be affected until farami is hitting level five which unlocks his fear resistant so we need to deal with the witch king and again until he will have some trebuchet uh, the amount of damage he will be able to deal to our castle is going to be quite limited because archers are extremely squishy and their dps against structures is also very very bad until they have firestone up uh, fire arrow upgrade purchase so we need trolls, a lot of trolls, and we also need darkness. Darkness got reworked, it gives you now less damage, uh, I mean less armor. It used to give you 33% damage, but 50% armor, we lower that to 33. Just because Witch King, I mean not Witch King, the Mordor faction doesn't need more leadership, trust me. Like, Mordor faction, even with the changes we have implemented into the leadership system, will still be the faction with the most leadership by far in the entire game. What we wanted to do is 
We wanted to deny that you can get from level 1 to level 10 in a single second. With the amount of combat experience from the Drummer Troll plus the Eye of Sauron, you would have 300% increased combat experience, which would literally mean you kill like one single tower and boom, you are level 10, just like that, you know? And also same to the Gandalf. Gandalf will also now offer you 100% increased combat experience instead of 200. Just kill all these archers. And as you can see and tell, we are doing a phenomenal job defending. There is Boromir, the captain of Gonzo. One does not simply walk into Mordor. Look at his picture, boys. But he's yet trying desperately to walk into Mordor. That's not a great idea, my friend. Let's kill the outpost. This one is going to be taken down, unfortunately. But it's fine. The main castle is our, you know, priority to be protected. By pressing T, we can give them trees. Let's kill the archers first, Witch King. There we go. Then we can finish the outpost right after. And as you can see, our defense is great. And once the slaughterhouses are hitting level 3, it will be even greater. But now he has rangers with fire arrows. Now we can send the Nazgul forward or the Witch King rather. And he will be able to use Screech. And everything is going to be feared for 10 seconds. There we go. Now with fire arrow upgrade, it's a bit different story. Boromir is actually taking a lot of arrows, but it's fine. He's almost level 4. That's becoming dangerous because with level 4, he will unlock his... Captain of Gondor leadership, which would mean 60% more damage for a nearby allied unit. But it's fine also, because Witch King, as mentioned before, has now 10% more damage against heroes. And you can see we are hurting a little bit more than we were hurting before. We need one more troll to get the troll case to level 2 for the drummer trolls, ladies and gentlemen. And kill the archers, Witch King. Like, a couple of archers like that, they can't deal with the Witch King. You need many, many rangers. You need also heroes like Faramir. Because one single archer, what can he do against such a reckless hit? They have also darkness from the spellbook. But again, I would like to recruit every kind of unit. For that reason, we will be building the outpost right here and build the Mumma Kill Pen, which also got buffed, by the way. The price is reduced from 1,500 down to 1,000. But not only that, um, it's also able to level up to level 2 much, much faster. By recruiting two Mumma Kills, you will get your Mumma Kill Pen to level 2. And four Mumma Kills after that, you will get it to level 3. Uh, which is going to, of course, increase the production speed of your Mumma Kills. But also, not only that, Mumma Kills, once the Mumma Kill Pen is level 3, are going to enter the battlefield by being level 2. And as mentioned at the beginning of the video, level advantage in BFME 1 is huge, especially for the evil factions, because it will make them, that will give them the chance and ability to heal up over time when they are out of combat. So, pretty, pretty important. Okay, now we can get Mumakias and put Haradrims on top of them, just like in the films. No man can kill you, we already know, my friend. Let's use the Orcs to deal with the map control. There is a settlement right in front of us. And also what we did, we improved the auto attack range from a Nazgul or a Witch King. Normally, until you right-click, he would never do something. He would never attack. Also the Eagles from the Gondor faction. Now, when you summon them, they will automatically attack anything which is nearby. So I can show you guys what I mean. When there would be like units in this case. Look, I'm not attacking, you see. Uh, but he will automatically attack. That would never be the case, by the way, in BFMU1 before. Okay, we need Mumma kills. There we go. You see, we get a lot of the experience now from the Mumma kill pen. And after the second one is arriving, it's going to be level 2. We have also 4 throws. If you don't know, the drama throws are also able to buff the Haradrims on top of the Mumma kill. The outpost has been taken down. That's great. This farm is going down slowly but surely. And now we can also capture this one and build eventually some uh, siege weapons. Because I want to try something different in this game. You know, I want to recruit those siege ladders. Not ladders, but the siege towers. You know, the big ones, not like the small ones from Isengard. The big ones from Mordor, just like in the film on the, uh, you know, during the fights in Minas Tirith. And we will put those uh, things on top of the wall from the Gondor and get with Oryx inside the jeans. That is the plan, ladies and gentlemen. I have like crazy ideas, you know. I was also thinking about adding something like a Grant, like the Grant, the Siege Machine to the Mordor faction from a level 3 Siege Wars, for example, like a anti camp weapon, you know, which can be extremely tanky and hitting like a truck for a really high price, maybe for 5,000 or maybe, maybe even more than that. So, what would you guys think about that? Let me please know in the comment section down below. I also like this map quite a lot, man. Let's get more Mumakias. And some of you guys were explain, you know, complaining about the command points we have increased from the trolls from 10 to 15, and also from the drummer trolls from 10 to 15. But watch yourself. 
Normally, Mordor has 400 command points. We boosted overall command points from every single faction. So now making the trolls a bit more expensive in terms of command points isn't making isn't a nerf to Mordor because you have 100 more command points available. So there we go. Nice. The age of the orcs, ladies and gentlemen. Rangers. You want to fight? Rangers? The Witch King. I'm so happy about the Witch King's um, power, you know? Look how many rangers he has. Like, the thing is, when they're around the tricks, they're also able to get stealthed, you know? So let's build now the Siege Wargs and actually double Siege Wargs plus a Blacksmith or, um, you know, Furnace. If also five power points collected, we can pick up eventually the Scavenger, which will give us money every time. But we also did is a change... Hold on a second. Um, to the slaughterhouses outside. We, we make them cheaper. I will show you what I mean after killing the settlement. So, but first of all, let's deal with that. Peregrine, Me what are you doing, my friend? You can't handle the Witch King. No man can kill you. Oryx now with Bloodthirsty against Tower Guards. You see, they are dealing way more damage. Normally, they would deal not like slightly that much damage. And I'm talking about the Siege Towers. They cost a lot, but they only cost 5 command points. And if you don't know, they are extremely tanky at the same time. Okay, we destroyed the farm eventually very soon. Darkness is still available. We can also make them by pressing U and right-click on the Mumai Kill. Follow the Mumai Kill. The farm has been taken down. He got money back from the farm, I believe. He has like the marketplace, but it's fine. We have a lot of Oryx. And the plan is to get all these Oryx to this area and get them inside the Siege Tower. And watch this. The Slaughterhouse normally costs 300. Now it costs 200. For both the factions, obviously. Isengard and also Mordor. So you guys can... He has many, many trebuchet on top of the wall, though. But it's fine. You know what? We can always use the Witch King to kill them all. One by one. And I miss the Siege Towers, dude. I don't remember... I can't even remember when was the last time I was getting them recruited. Just like in the films, you know, you see? Nazgûls are being used to kill the trebuchet of Gondor. He has used the warning arrow, but you know what? I can show you guys the power of Screech. You see? For 10 seconds, they are now fleeing... Running for their lives. Like, ho look how many orcs we are getting in the meantime. Okay, we killed all the trebuchet on top of the wall, but don't, don't lose the Witch King. Please, 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 please. By attacking, you can make them fly a bit faster. And now we need to peel back until Witch King is able to recover. We have also enough money for the, for the, Witch, for the Nazgul. You see how tanky this is? You can also trample, by the way, if you don't know. I mean, that's not a change. That's like how they were designed in the first place. You see? They can be used as a trampling thing. Similar to a Mumma kill, pretty much. You can't right-click on the enemy, but you can go over the enemy. <laughs> like, look how many tower guards we are killing, dude. Look how, how tanky this also is, this, you know, this unit. Like, normally nobody gets them ever recruited. But if you get them, they are surprisingly effective. We need more of these, though. The only downside is they are extremely expensive, but that's fine. Because they are also extremely tanky. So now we need to right click on the wall. I mean, this one is going to be definitely taken down. We need more orcs, but we are command points kept. Now, let's bring the big guns, boys. The Witch King. Oh, he was following us. This guy. Please revenge the Witch King. We need to revive him as soon as possible. And now, we have also revive time for every hero, like Witch King, for example. Revive time from level 1 to level 10 is 4 minutes. We also made the Nazgul's revive time sh lower. They used to have 5 minutes um, revive time. Now, they have actually 4 minutes, just like the Witch King. So, you can get them revived a bit faster, which also is a buff to Mordor faction. So, overall, I would say Mordor got more buffs than nerfs. Uh, the, the nerves we have implemented is nothing against Mordor. It's a general change, like a direction we wanted to follow for the patch 2.22, just to make the combat experience a bit weaker. And also the siege weapons a bit more expensive. Again, that's not only affecting the Mordor faction, but also the Isengard faction and also the Gondor faction especially. The Nazgul. Please look at this beautiful river, guys. Do you see that? Firian DL. Again, that's like a reskin of the map, uh, Firian DL in BFME 2. But again, not a single texture which exists in BFME 2 does exist in BFME 1. So, our friend Dimek, who is also the coder of this patch 2.22, was retexturing re literally everything. And not only this map, but we will have plenty of new maps coming up. 
Look at this, man. Can you please kill this? Kill this uh, thing. The defense of... Hey, look, this drummer troll. What are you doing, drummer troll? Drama Troll is like trying to make a baby or something with the Mooma Kill. I don't know what's going on. All right. We have a lot of orcs now. We need more than that. Let's recruit more, 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 more. And then after defending ourselves around this side, which is going to be easier said than done. Look how long they need to take down the siege weapons. Do you see that? And we can trample them just like that. I mean, they are slow as hell, but still, you know, better than nothing. Okay. The Mooma Kill has been taken down. Oh, but the, the burst. I think the Faramir was using the one, warning arrow, which again is super effective against the Nazgul. We need more. <laughs> Guys, I didn't pay attention for a single second and there goes down the Nazgul, huh? We have not even used the Darkness for one single time. I'm pretty tempted to use it now to make the orcs a bit stronger. Let's use it. Darkness. Okay, we are bro breaking literally every wall of the Gondor, but I would still like to get my siege towers around this side. Okay, three parts of the wall broken. Maybe get one more broken before he dies. Now he has the darkness. He will be a bit tankier. One of the siege warriors has been taken down, which is pretty unfortunate. Losing the Citadel here would be the worst case scenario because that's the outpost we are using to revive the Nazgul and also the Witch King. But the... <laughs> Gothmog was right, you know, the age of man is over. The age of the orcs has come. Don't use warning arrow. What did he use warning arrow on? I don't know, maybe on an orc? He definitely did not hit the Nazgul. Okay, we broke the, like three parts of the wall. This one, unfortunately, was able to survive, but it's fine. Now you can see the Mumma Kill Pen is level three. That means every Mumma Kill coming out from the Mumma Kill Pen is going to be now level two. Okay, just do your thing. Witch King, we need more siege towers. Let's go for a double siege so we can get them a bit faster. And let's try to make it to the wall. Faramir, you are gonna die, my friend. It's not your time to show your quality, Faramir. The Witch King of Engmar has slain the captain of Gondor, Faramir. Now that's where the fun begins because now with the siege towers, we will, you know, start sieging the white city, Gondor. You guys need to go here. Nazgul and Witch King, you guys please take care of this archers. Look at this trebuchet damage, no? Witch King, can you please take care of this? Okay, nice, Witch King. Thank you very much, my friends. And now just defend. And now, guys, come here. Come here. <laughs> Alright. I mean, cl oh, Cloud Break. But watch this. Tainted Land gives us fear resistance. Tainted Land also got reworked. We have now less armor from the Tainted Land, but it offers you now also fear resistance. So basically, every faction has at least two ways besides Mordor to get fear resistance. The reason why Mordor has only one single way is because monsters are not affected by fear. That means with the Cloud Break or any stunning ability, you can't affect trolls, moment kills, or even siege weapons, right? So for that reason. Uh, Mordor is not going to be affected by the fear effect most of the time. Since orcs are like an early game unit from Mordor, they will not be your main choice in the mid to late game. And everything you recruit after that will have fear resistance available anyway. Look at this. We need more orcs, ladies and gentlemen. More orcs. We are command points capped once again. And as you can see and tell, the Mumakil is coming on the field while being level 2. Okay, Nazgul's, you do you, my friend. You do you. Kill the rangers first. That's your, that's your priority. Look at the orcs with the darkness. And also, of course, the Witch King leadership, which means 50% more damage and 50% more armor for the nearby allied units. Archer range has been taken down as the third Nazgul is arriving on the field. And we have also a lot of orcs here. So, orcs, you do you, my friends. You go ham. So, you guys, just take care of the Citadel. That's all you need to do. And we bring more orcs. I can never understand why Mordor, or Sauron in this case, was trying to win the battle in Minas Tirith with orcs exclusively. Imagine if he would have like more trolls. Like trolls seemed overall to be OP in the Lord of the Rings, you know what I'm saying? But uh, it feels like that, uh, yeah, they didn't have enough trolls. The tower guards in the shield wall formation, they can't do anything about that. There are some ranges hiding around the trees, but not anymore. Once again, Screech. And again, alone the fear re uh, resistance system we changed in Battle for Middle of One is a huge buff to the Mordor faction who has three heroes with Screech. 
and this screech let's be honest was absolutely useless before on the patch 1.06 because once you get level 2 or by banner from your blacksmith armory or whatsoever you could be absolutely immune to the screech from the nazgus now it's much more effective and again some of you guys were complaining about the nerves to mordor and when you trust me trust me now but mordor is going to be stronger than ever before i'm worried that mordor can be even a bit too strong again if this is going to be the case don't you worry guys because we will keep working on the patch all the time and also this map fear and zeal as well as many many other maps will be implemented into the new version we will try to improve the graphics we will try to add some new sound effects add now add some new maps some textures and the one thing which is not going to be changed is the victorious screen which you will get playing the patch 2.22 thank you guys so much for watching i hope this was enjoyable if this was enjoyable please don't forget to leave a like subscribe for more content like this in the future i will see you next time until then keep hitting like a truck and also stay beyond standards peace out